<clears throat> okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some um, results from Abacus CAE. Like in this case, this is sort of a uh, eighth symmetry model or quarter symmetry model, I guess, eighth symmetry really, of a uh, dog bone tensile test. And the idea here is to do like a, material, a constitutive model validation and verification. So we want to actually extract the uh, strains uh, or generate a stress strain curve in the same manner that you would from an experiment, okay? So we've done the simulation, and of course it gives me the stresses everywhere. Now to get the stresses, we'll get them from um, uh, knowing the load as a function of time. So on this one, basically we've, we've put a traction on the top face here. So I know the stress, the P over A stresses you would use in an experiment at every time. And now I need to get the strain uh, as if it were measured by an extensometer, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I, I wanna get the displacement of say this node as a function of time so I can put it you know, in Excel and manipulate it, all right? So how do you do that? Well, uh, the first thing you're going to do is it's obviously you have to be, you have to have results and you have to be in visualization, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is go and select create XY data. So I'm going to do that. And I get this option popping up. Now it's asking me, what's the source? So in this case, it's ODB file. And this is not history output, this is field output. So we're going to select ODB field output, right? because that's what we're looking at here. We're getting it from the nodal displacements and, or you could do it from the element stresses as well. Fine, so we do continue. And now you have this menu that pops up. There's two options. One is a variables tab, which allows you to basically say what it is you want to plot. And the other one is the node elements tab where you make your selection. So you could have a node set uh, already defined uh, but if you don't, l let's use uh, pick from viewport, okay? So I'm going to keep it at pick from viewport. Actually, you can see I already had a node set to find an extensometer node, right? I, so I actually could operate on those, but uh, let's let's not even do that, right? Let's let's uh, right. I mean, if you if you know how to set node sets, you can do that and just select them directly from here. But let's do pick from viewport. So. You have to edit the selection, and uh, let's pick the nodes in the viewport. So let's say we want, really we just need one of these nodes. Oops, I don't think that's a good one. Let's not get that one. It looks like it's in the, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see better. See, that one's in the interior. I don't want that one. Let's take uh, that node right on the surface. I could take this one as well, but it's a this node is fully fixed because of the essential boundary condition, so, so there you go. So we've selected the nodes in the viewport and we'll do add selection, I think. Oh, wait, delete these. Pick from viewport, add selection, edit selection. So we'll pick the node, and then, okay, so right, so we pick the node, and now we're done. Fine, okay, that's what I forgot, you gotta do done down here. And now I have one node selected. So there's one node selected in this viewport. Now let's go uh, and plot it. So we go to variables, and we want, in this particular case, let's say we want to plot just the displacement in the two direction, the y direction. So I check that and we can plot it. And there you go. There's the plot of the displacement at that node. It's actually node, I know you won't be able to see it on the video, but it's actually written down here in the, the legend. It's node 1522 and it's the node in the y direction. And this is it. First time, this is just a linear elastic material. So it's a rather boring plot, but so be it. And also, you can save it, right? So I don't know. So so this actually keeps it in record, right? And from there we'll be able to get the data in XY form 
in a tabular form and be able to cut and paste that into a spreadsheet. So it's fine. It says XY data will be extracted from the field using the default names, and you know it's only available for this session. That's fine. So it's extracted those. Okay, so fine. So we can dismiss this, all right? So it's actually saved this data, and you can see it now. If we go next to the create XY data, and we go to XY data manager, here we go. And actually, it did it twice because I think I clicked it twice, but so be it, right? Here is that plot, right? So you could select plot here again, it'll replot it. Uh, you can do a bunch of other things. But 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 now what you want to do is you want to get, I mean, this data in the spreadsheet so you can manipulate it. Now, there's probably other ways to do it, but the easiest way I find, or the only way I know, actually, is to go and edit it. And so when we edit it, you'll get all the data here in XY, where X is um, the step, okay? This is the step. And Y is going to be... Um, you know, that displacement value, right? So you can just select all of them, copy, right? And then bring it over to your spreadsheet and just paste. Oops, wait, what happened there? Paste. And there you go. And there's your data, right? And now if you want to compute the strain, right, you'd have to figure out, go back into here. Let's get rid of all this stuff. I should know what the original extensometer length is. So we go back here, and which note was it? I believe it was that one. Let's let's query the the coordinates. So we'll go tools, query, right? And we're gonna pick something for a node. So let's pick that. I know it was node fifteen twenty. Oh, it's already selected. Okay, so it is the right node fifteen twenty two. And let's, well, it wrote it down here. So the base coordinates are, it's Y coordinate is, um, I guess this is millimeters. It's 1.875 millimeters. You can see it right down here, okay? I know, again, it's hard to see on the video because the resolution isn't that good. But when you do this, you'll look down here and you'll see it. All right, so we know the original length is going to be that value. So, you know, L is 1.875, right? It's going to be the same initial length for all these steps. And so we can get this small scale strain, EPS, which is just change in length over length. It's basically going to be the displacement over the length. So that's going to equal this value divided by this value. And there's the strain. Right? And then you can plot the strain versus time. All right? Stuff like that. Or whatever else you want to do with it. We can do the same thing, get the force versus time, and go from there. All right? That's basically how it goes. All right. I hope that's helpful.